Guys, today we're making a video I've wanted to make for a couple weeks, but I had a smoke detector go bad, so I had to hold off on it. This is a System Sensor B200S, if I'm not mistaken. SR, I apologize. B200SR sounder base. It's high pitched, it, it makes the same sound as the Spectra Alert advances. Um, but what's important about this is you can set it up so when a smoke detector goes off, only this goes off and nothing else. So that's what we're going to be messing with today. That's what I'm going to be showing off. Um, so I'll show you how to program it and I will show you how to wire it up. So let's get to it. Alrighty, I'm willing to bet you can hear it in the background, but the reason I'm showing you this right now is because the hot water heater is deciding to run. And so I'm showing you the new smoke detector. It's a just 10, just like the old one. And I'm going to try to mag test it so we can uh, see what happens normally if we don't do any programming. This is just a regular detector. Let's go ahead and take a look. There you go. So normally, what happens is it just causes a full fire. It says alarm, smoke photo, zone zero. That's normal. So, I'm going to try to talk loudly over the hot water heater in the background, and I will show you how to program this so it doesn't cause a full fire event. Man, I really wish it wasn't so loud down here. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into the top level programming, which you can Google what the default password is if you're curious. For starters, we need to have a zone set up. And what I did is I set up, you'll see in zones installed, I set up zone one, where you can see in zone types, I actually have it set to, well, I meant to have it set to a supervisor, but I was messing around with things earlier. So we can actually change that to a supervisory it doesn't matter too much we can kind of have it be whatever it is this is just a a pretty name more than anything um because oh i'm sorry went too far all right we're gonna go into point program and i'll show you on the detector which is address 10 we'll see it's smoke photo for starters, I didn't ever name this one yet, now that I got it reinstalled. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'll show you how. Just go through and use the number pad if you want to. You can use PS tools as well, but I don't have my computer by me. So I'll type this in just like this, like old time texting. Works pretty well. You can see that it just says basement storage, very simple. Now for zone assignments, we want to put it on zone 1 so it doesn't set off all the other devices. Alrighty, so we're going to put it on zone 1 only. Now it'll still cause a full fire regardless of it being on zone 1 if we leave it as a smoke photo. So what you actually want to do is you want to scroll down until you see... I may have passed it. Here, photo super AR. And I was hoping AR means auto reset, but as far as I can tell in my brief testing, it doesn't. So, cool. But if we wanna make sure that it um, doesn't, uh, that it only does the latching supervisory, if, um, if it's verified, you can turn on verification, I think. I actually wanna go ahead and test it, so we're going to. Just kidding, you can't. Doesn't let you. <laughs> All right, never mind. You can't turn on super or uh, verification. It's just if it's supervised or if it's just a supervision, it's just a supervision. Oh wait. So we're gonna back out of this, and we're actually gonna go to Nax now, which is in System Setup. Nax. And I'm going to put this one on NAC4 because I only want it to get power when it goes into alarm. So NAC4, I have set up to be enabled. It's uh, right now linked as a sync strobe. 
um, to I believe do coding to it. What I found is that it doesn't really work. So um, for zone one, it's enabled. Um, so you can't code these things as far as I can tell. I don't know if they actually do sync or not. Uh, I haven't played with it too much. Um, but let's go ahead and I'll show you how to wire this all up now so you can see how it works. Okay, I've come over here in hopes that it's just slightly quieter than the noise by the hot water heater. So, we have SLC- minus and SLC+, plus hooked up to one wire, and EXT- minus and EXT+, plus hooked up to another wire. There's also um, a fifth terminal, and that's actually for interconnect, if you choose to use it. Some other options have hush buttons, so um, that doesn't work with this panel in particular, but um, you could hush the alarm just by pushing a button on top of the sounder base unit or uh, an external button somewhere. Um, in any case, we have this set up to not interconnect with anything because we don't need to. This is how you wire it up. Uh, this goes to your either 24 volt power or NAC. Uh, and then this obviously goes into your SLC. So let's go pop these on the panel. Okay, thank goodness the uh, hot water heater finally turned off here. So what I have is on NAC 4, I have some wire running off, poorly not run through anything, not clean, all the way down to the uh, sounder base's base and some wire from the SLC running off as well. Let me mention, I hate 14 gauge wire. Try to avoid using it if you can. Obviously, if you're setting up a real system, you gotta do calculations, decide if you need to use it. In this case, I don't need to use it, but it's all I had that was pre-stripped, so cool. And then we have, um, the point I wanted to make is, the reason I have to put it on a NAC on this panel in particular is because it allows me to do supervision. I'm not, but if I were to move that resistor down to the end of this guy here, then this base would be properly supervised. So if it got disconnected, I would know. Which is an important thing if this were on a real system. But now what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our actual sounder base itself and we're gonna hook it up. So I'll show you how to do that and exactly what to do right now. Alrighty, so what we have here is we've got two screw terminals there that line up with the screws that are sticking out there. So those are tamper screws. The idea is you can't just pull this head down very easily. So all you gotta do, this is gonna be impossible to do with one hand, but you would line those up and kind of click it in place. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then you tighten down those screws and it'll be on. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll get right back to you. Alrighty, that's all in place. So I'm about to get an invalid reply from my smoke detector because I took it down. There it is. Invalid reply. So let's go ahead and pop it back on here. This is the same thing you would always do. You just screw it in there, uh, line up the little holes and, and screw it on. We'll be good to go. So let me go ahead and do that. Alrighty, I've got this guy sitting up here in the panel just so I can show you how it works. As a backtrack to my having it on NAC4, I figured out that I forgot to program NAC4 to go off upon a supervisory signal as well. So it wasn't, so I just hooked this up here um, to set it off. Now, l let me mention on a, uh, if you were to hook it up to a control module, which you can do, you can um, set it up so the 24 volt power goes into the control module and then the module supervises the circuit too. So that'll be fine. Um, let me grab my magnets here, and I will try to mag test this so we can see it in action. It's going to be loud when it goes off. There it is. I can silence it in any way. So not until power is cut to the SLC will that thing set up. 
So that'll certainly wake someone up if this was in their room. Uh, you oftentimes see sounder bases in hotel rooms or dorm rooms or um, in some nursing homes they've got them in the rooms. So it causes a supervisory signal instead of a full fire evacuation. Um, so it'll wake someone up. Now someone still has to go reset the panel because this is a latching supervisory signal. So, what, you know, you'd have to have your schools, uh, like say in the college situation, you'd have to have your school's public safety come in and um, reset the system every time somebody has their smoke detector go off in their room. So, it's very loud, definitely going to wake you up, but it's better than evacuating the whole building. So, I mean, that's the real benefit of sounder bases. So, for messing with them... That's how a sounder base works. That's how you set it up to just cause a supervisory signal and not evacuate the entire building. And if someone's were to go off and it turns out there is a real emergency, they'll have to run to the nearest pulse station and go ahead and activate that and you'd have your full fire evacuation going off as well. I have my horn strobes disabled, but you get the idea. So that is the video for today. Guys, I have yet to see a um, detailed video on sounder bases, so... Please, if you could, leave me a like, share it around if you're interested or if you know anyone who is interested in sounder bases and how they work. Share them around, leave a like, ask any questions in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.